Hey, welcome back to Mastering EDM with Logic Pro, and today is going to be the ninth video in our series introducing uh, mixing, and uh, it's going to be the second to last video here, and I'm going to cover automation. Automation is extremely important in your mixes, and the reason why is it adds variety. Um, so essentially, if you have a bass line running throughout your entire track, and it's the same bass line uh, over and over and over again, and... Um, it, it kind of gets dull after a period of time. Uh, now, granted, if you work really hard on your bass line, you could get it so throughout the entirety of the song, it doesn't sound bad. But um, for instance, the, this is a pretty cool bass line. Pretty cool bass line. But eventually you kind of want to change it up. You don't want You don't want it to be running the same like for the entire song. So uh, I have some automation going right here and I'll kind of show you what that does. I'm actually switching, uh, I, I don't particularly like the way this is sounding right now, so I'll probably change it, but it shows you what automation can really do for you. You have this track going. So you saw there how I kind of transitioned from one baseline to an entirely different one. And that's mostly because what I'm doing here is that I'm cutting out the bass in one of them and then I'm pulling the volume um, up for the other one, I believe, or if, or if, or if I recall correctly. So I'm pulling up the EQ. If you can see right here, which EQ is it? So I'm cutting out all the low end to make it sound thinner. And at the same time, I'm actually doing one other thing. If you watch the volume level, it's going down. So that's what automation does, is it basically, it takes a control and it lets you draw in patterns to change it over time. Um, now, th there's a lot of things you could do with this. I can't possibly cover uh, everything, but I'll just show you generally how you could use it uh, in the sense of setting it up and getting it to work. So volume is the easiest thing. Um, if you have a if you have you have a track going, and um, you just want to ch uh, change the volume automation. Right now, I, uh, normally you see this. You don't see any of the automation. And if you click this little button here, it's the automation button, and it lets you see everything that's going on. So um, uh, on the track I'm on right now, if you'll see, it has this uh, this gray line, and that's where my volume is at right now. So if I pull that up, that gray line will theoretically move. If I switch in and out, there we go. Now it's back up there. Um, so that's that's essentially what uh, what that gray line is. Now if I click anywhere on here, it'll start to draw an automation. So now we have a line here that we could use to change the volume level over time. So I could go like this and then this. And so we got basically, it would change over time. So it lets you do some really trippy things. It's, uh, automation is just purely amazing. So uh, volume isn't the coolest thing you could do with it, but it's one of the things. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is uh, the other tool here. So right now, um, see if you notice, you have different pointer tools you could use. Right now, I have this set to automation curve tool. So I'm going to switch to my other pointer. Um, I'm holding control on my keyboard, but I'm not entirely sure if that's what it will be on yours. It might be command, if I recall correctly. Um, I use a Windows keyboard. Um, anyway. So I have this automation curve tool. Now I can do some interesting things to this. So the first thing I can do is I can pull it up and that makes it bubble up like that. And what it what that means is over time, at first it starts to move up fast and then it starts to gradually move up. Now the opposite is if you pull it down, it gradually moves up and then it starts moving up faster. So that's that. And if you just regularly click it while holding command, then um, it goes back to a straight line. Now, the other thing is, is it's, it's uh, in between. Um, so what it does is first it goes up fast and it slows down, then it goes up fast again. 
and then if you pull it the other direction, it does the opposite. So it's very versatile in what curves you could do, and uh, that allows you to have some creativity in, um, you know, okay, so first I want it to come in like quietly so you could barely hear it, and then, but you could hear, tell it's getting louder, but you could just barely tell. And then it starts to go up faster, so you could kind of tell it's starting to come in more, and then you want it to just level out. So it's kind of like a um, hint that you're gonna bring it in, bring it in, and then level it out. So it's kind of, it's not just instantly at its maximum volume. You just bring it in so you could definitely hear it, and then you level it out to its maximum volume level. So that's what that curve is. And um, so ex experiment, figure out what you could do. And um, and essentially automation, there's a whole bunch of things you could use it for. One of the things that it's used uh, most for is volume. And the other things are, um, you could do high cut, uh, low cut, high pass, low pass. You could do those and um, get some interesting sounds. And uh, like um, if you, like right before uh, a break, you, you have the, the intro going and then you have it cut out. Now you, you could like put a, a filter on there and just go and just cut out all the sound. I could show you what that sounds like uh, practically. Uh, I'll just do it on my main mix. So it shows you what you could do if you were to automate that in. Now you can actually uh, automate this in if you do, let me go do a track that I already have here. But this is my baseline here my awesome heavy bass line. And um, so what I could do is I gotta actually automate this by going to, uh, there's no automation on it right now. So let's see, I want to map the high cut frequency. So I, you go to the, the, okay, so you have volume and pan up here. Main is for your sends and whether you want to mute and solo and stuff like that uh, at a particular time. I don't suggest muting and soloing. I suggest using volume when you want to do that. Um, it's harder when you want to solo a track because um, then you have to mute everything else by doing volume for everything else, but you don't get a, a kind of jumping in and out sound that you probably wouldn't want. So um, you know, one thing to keep in mind, synthesizers are a little bit of a pain because synthesizers have a lot of settings you have to dig through, figure out which one you're going for. So that's a whole lot of stuff. Like if I wanted to find like the uh, layer two pitch and automate that, it might take me a while here to get to layer two. Layer two, here we go. And uh, it's probably somewhere, voice, LFO, LFO, that's, oh no, I, that's layer one, my bad. Um, so long story short, you see it's, it's a little bit of a pain to dig through, but uh, I'll show you a remedy for that if I can. And, um, so let's EQ, set it to high cut frequency. And okay, now she will have to go, and you still have to go find it. But um, if I hit latch right here, then it does something interesting. I could go, um, I don't recall if this is how you do it. stop this you couldn't see it but now ha 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 there we go so um latch what latch does is it follows the setting and lets you change some of the stuff here so if i could zoom in here kind of show you what went on um but essentially what i did when it when i moved it it automatically marked how i was moving it and so you could get something and if you trust yourself better to um to you know, move move it around and get the sound you want, then you could do that. You could just set it to latch here and um, then you'll basically uh, automate stuff. Now, if you have a MIDI controller with uh, faders and stuff like that, that's really useful because then you could actually control it using the faders and get the exact sound you want. Um, personally, all my automation, as you can see um, from the other stuff here, all my automation is manually keyed in by clicking and using the curves. And um, I'll just be honest, it's because I prefer to do things mathematically instead of um, by a way of a, a live sort of, or a human 
uh, method of pulling it in. So all my curves are manually um, done in using um, selecting two points and then just curving it. So um, so that's automation. You could do it for a lot of things. I probably said that 20 times in this video and that's I'm, I'm good at repeating your things apparently. Um, but anyway, uh, use it and don't, uh, don't leave it out because uh, a great way to make your track sound plain is if you don't have any automation. There's nothing to kind of bring in those transitions and move things in and out and around. Um, automation is something that you'll find you're more likely to not do enough than you are to um, do too much. And that's just because um, automation is a pain in the butt to do because you have to go through and figure out what exactly you want to automate, how much you want to automate it, how over the period of time, how quickly you want it to automate and stuff like that. So it's, it's, it's a pain to get it right. But, um, but when you do get it right, it adds a lot of movement to your track and, um, and your song progresses a lot better. So, uh, so that's, that's automation. Um, and, uh, I've gone over as much as I can. Um, you could, you could do a lot with automation. I I've said that 20 times, but you really can, you could automate distortion. You could automate modulation. You could automate, uh, bringing in reverb. That's one of the ones you automate a lot too. Um, you could automate pitch. Pitch is something you will automate very often, especially if you're doing a uh, a pitch build where you have the track is going. So then you would automate the pitch as you're going along. Um, so so really try to use it as much as you can. Um, don't worry about using it too much because if you use it too much, you'll really be able to tell because it'll just sound terrible. But um, but as for underusing it, you want to try to keep from underusing it. Um, because then you, you'll just get a very static track and it'll sound like, okay, a synth came in and the synth disappeared and the synth came in and the synth disappeared. And now we're in a different section of the song. But, um, I mean, for crying out loud, if you have a snare build, you can't do that without automation. You need to automate the volume in, um, so that you get the snare build going and it just gets louder. And then finally you get the impact. If you have a regular snare drum that's just kind of going at the same volume the entire time, it sounds really plain. So keep that in mind and try to use automation in your product projects, and uh, and it really spice things up and gives it giving you flavor and feel to your tracks. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video here. Uh, in the meantime, remember to subscribe and comment and like and stuff that keeps me motivated and keeps me going. So um, thank you so much, and I will see you next time. Bye.